Happy New Year, everyone. Everyone, Happy New Year. Hopefully, everyone have, will have a blessed New Year. And stay healthy, everyone. Um, I'm in town hall right now. Just gonna grab something to eat and just walk around. Um, today is always gonna be the day it was shot, which is just the second of January. Um, I don't like having things hanging open for a while. For like, like I don't like shooting things like so far from the publication date. My brain doesn't work that way. As soon as I open a case, I want it to be closed. Um, so I'm on my way to get um, Hainanese chicken because last time I didn't get one. So hopefully it's open, it's not closed. And it's quite hot today actually. It's 27, but it's not humid, so it's okay. Uh, so, so far, I have had a false start. I signed up for a certification course about four days ago. And today I changed my mind and decided, no, I think I'm gonna cancel that. Cause I calculated the fact that even though this course that I signed up, if you're in New South Wales or in Australia, uh, the government is providing a lot of free courses, uh, especially from TAFE, to upskill uh, the industries in Australia. So I signed up to one of those free courses. So you don't pay for the course, but I calculated that fact that I needed at least a grand for transportation cost for the duration of the course and I don't know if I can like my brain just didn't really like it and it felt so pressuring because I don't know if I'm gonna make money or not whether I'm gonna starve or not so I don't know how much money I'll be having and I don't know if I can afford the transportation fee on top of the stress that come from studying again also I'm not sure how confident I am in going back to school I feel insecure and my body is not well still apparently so yeah it was a spontaneous decision to sign up and it was a spontaneous decision to cancel lasted five days it was a false start oh they're making they're taking over Coco amusement they're taking over uh, the premise next door Coco amusement is basically uh, an arcade uh, place where you just go in the arcade to play games uh, Around this time of the year, usually locals are not in town. Mostly people are tourists or out of town is. And yeah. So let's see if we have if we have Hainanese chicken or not. 20% chances of rain today. I also wrapped up another thing from last year, which was this opal card from the last time I went to Bondi Junction. They have this emergency in Bondi Junction and we couldn't tap off, so we got charged the maximum amount. Like if you come to um, Sydney, we have an opal card, which is a tap on and tap off. You can do it with a card or you can do it with your uh, credit card, but I've been using my Opal card now because I want to have a conscious expenditure because with Opal card you have to oh no they don't they're not open I have not had locks with this definitely I have not had locks with this oh, they got a net now <laughs> whoever is responsible for this needs to be 
uh, told off. Are they afraid of people killing themselves? Like legit. Anyway, I saw there was a curry and laksa place around here. I don't know where. So yeah, where was I? I was feeling very insecure about the whole thing and oh no it's about Bondi Junction so it has been almost what four five days apparently you I already like sent an email about it but no response and I know it's a holiday season so it's not really surprising but today after I called uh, after I cancelled my safe thing, my certification thing, I didn't know. I called them up and asked for my <laughs> refunded fee back. It was only $3 something but it paid off for my trip here because like I realized it was one of the things that made me feel uncomfortable like following through with my certification like so it was illogical if I didn't pursue the fee because it was important because um, you know if I had said oh it'd be okay I said it's only like three dollars something it's not important then why did I cancel my certification then because it's only three dollars something but it all adds up Anyway, I called up and they basically adjusted it straight away and I'm like I shouldn't have called up on the day when it happened rather than writing it in and so I felt like and because I was building momentum I know like it's probably very boring for you guys right but I need this because I can't talk to anyone else um, so I, well, I was on the roll, so I just asked for I also texted the guy who is responsible for the construction in my, in my building, whether, whether it's finished or not, like what can I expect? I got no idea what's going on. So, so yeah, so I did those three things today, contacted people wrapping up things from last year that was not wrapped up a full start also on top of that I've been crying a lot like a lot a lot like every time I just lay down or not do anything I cry so now I'm feeling lost what am I gonna do this year I'm turning 40 this year I realized like when I was still enrolled in that program that I was going to spend my birthday studying and I'm like, I don't think I want to do that. And it felt a little bit humiliating, but that's not the big part of it. I think the big part of it was me just not feeling confident at all of being able to do it physically, financially, mentally. So, yeah, I caved in, I guess. So I'm gonna check whether the Malaysian restaurant in the downstairs food court is open or not today. It's just behind Woolisi. You can enter via Pitt Street here. Or you can go from Woolworths, uh, Woolies Town Hall and then there is an exit from the back. It's just next to oh next to the Japanese Asian grocery show. Shop. Food court. <laughs> I think this is the first time I see this sign. In the past, it was so uh, hidden. Let's try our luck. Is it open? Is it open? Curry looks so open. Okay. Oh, okay. Do they have Hainanese chicken? Okay, Hainanese chicken rice. I think this is the only one that is open or maybe they closed just for the new year but yeah it used to be very crowded here I usually eat laksa here still good pricing $14.50 they have other things as well pretty good oh 
okay pricing I think it's better than the other ones uh, so the portion is quite small but I don't really mind it because I realized that <laughs> big portion means you have to take away in a box so for $13.50 I think this is the appropriate portion and they've got lots of rice usually the rice is really small so yeah you can have an option whether you want to put chili on top or not let's try the broth Nice broth. Let's try the rice. Broth good, nice food. Let's try the chicken. So the chili is pretty good. It's not, um, it's not spicy at all. Uh, but the best thing about this is the broth. This broth is really, really nice. So I just got a text back from my the constructor. Constructor, yeah. Hmm? The contractor. So apparently my balcony is going to be resuming work on two weeks from now. I thought it was going to be this week, apparently it's next week. So that saves a little bit of uh, anxiety of not knowing what's happening. This is it was more than I expected and the rice was a lot but I managed to finish it. If you're sensitive to smell, I'm not recommending you to go there because you have to get through that. But it's delicious and it's cheap. <coughs> <coughs> There's that. The metro station is almost done. Things gonna open this year, I reckon. And it's the metro for Tanho. So I just realized I don't know where to go. I was planning to go to China, uh, Country Club Chinatown as usual to have coffee but it's closing in like an hour so sorry like in less than an hour so I don't think it'll be worth it because I kind of just want to sit down apparently my adventurous uh, trait has no longer there I no longer want to adventure out I just want to sit and do nothing and have money come in constantly Street Mall. I don't know why I'm here, but oh, yeah, still don't know why I'm here. <laughs> anyway, I was crying in bed all week from when from the start of the break, which is a Friday, 22nd of December, all the way till yesterday. So I thought I might need just to get out of my bed and my apartment, and here we are. I decided to close one of my shops, well not close but like, you know, kind of close uh, even though it was making me money during Christmas because Society6 has to demand us to pay for keeping the shop open and I don't know, I'm just getting tired of being demanded money and not performing well um, it only performed a tiny little bit well this December, maybe because they wanted the idea for us thinking, oh, maybe we should put money in here and then you'll perform better. I don't think it will, so I'm gonna cancel that. But I'm still have my main my main shop open, which is society6.com/slash/ballerie. So that one's still open. 
I am looking for this optical lifestyle glasses shop. Let's check out the information tablet. I've just been watching baby TikTok videos on Instagram and on TikTok. <laughs> okay. on this level I can smell sewage water but like yeah I can smell sewage water what's going on it smells really bad I think it should be here oh, okay over there I'm not gonna buy anything but my first glasses I bought it from this store like not they moved to this, but like they previously in a different location, but from this shop, and it cost me eight hundred dollars. Oh, these ones are nice. There's a big frame. Oh, look at these. So I really like the frames. They're really big and really fitting to my face. The problem is, last time I bought it was 13 years ago, 12 years ago, and back then it cost me $800, and I thought that was expensive, but today, I checked out the prices there, it's a minimum of a grand, just for the frame, it's not the lenses, lenses are around $300, $400, so to get a complete prescription glasses from that place will cost me two grand. <laughs> I am so poor. Last time I got it, I was just started working, so I got money from my corporate job. Not anymore. Also, I couldn't record it because I didn't feel like having camera and just shove into their faces. Um, yeah, but they were really nice. The service was really nice. Maybe because it's more like an upmarket uh, shop. So, you know, most people probably wouldn't blink spending two grand, five grand, because the prices are for Cartier, Gucci, Tom Ford. I'll get rid of two of the balls. Not many people know this, this used to be an old gambling game. Yeah. So you can bet on anything you want. You're going to hedge an M. I saw a homeless guy. There's a lot of homeless um, beggars in the city now. And there was just one with a dog. And I felt like I'm more concerned with the dog than the person, which is, I know, probably really bad of me. But yeah. H&M. I don't really go to H&M that often, especially because of the music. But I have 15% of uh, voucher from my last uh, recycling bid, and it was in the last vlog, uh, last video before this. So I saw online that they have, uh, I don't know, what do they have? They have accessories. That wasn't bad at all. So let's check out accessories. I feel like I'm losing my. So that's where you want to recycle if you need to recycle. I feel like I'm losing my je my zest for life. I don't feel like living in a passionate way. Ooh. Especially like after I cancel the the 
safe thing today. I thought, what am I going to do now? How am I going to fill my time that I'm actually going to make money? Like, am I going to guarantee myself making money? Like, I'm running out of ideas. And things have been shut down. So I don't know how to do life anymore. I don't know what I need to do. I don't want to waste time, especially I'm turning 40 this year. But at the same time, I don't know what I can, like physically, mentally, and other things as well. So like within my capacity. So I don't know what to do now. Should I? I don't know. I like this color. Also, this is how I look. I look like this now. From the side, belly. <laughs> anyway, this is reality. I feel like whatever I do, I can't escape being ugly. Skyline. So all of this used to be like one building. So H&M basically is taking over this whole building. It used to be like lots of little shops, um, lots of you know, basically like a shopping mall. And H&M just took over the whole building. Isn't that insane? So this is the men's section. Uh, I think there's more over there at the back or something. Oh. I think we can leave from here to go to Wellsville. And I feel like I'm insecure with my face as well. It's getting, my skin is getting worse and worse. And I don't want to chalk it on makeup and just looks better, but it's not actually healthy. So, and it's more that actually, it's more the fact that my skin, even though the looks is bad, it's more with the fact that is unhealthy skin look at that like that's a remnant of the old place I think it used to be office space this but this bit ooh water stop tech so this is waterproof this is the men's section though $120 I'm starting to shop in the men's section because they're cheaper and for some reason the cut is better like the way the fabric is cut maybe because my body is more like more sl more, more like male one you can exit from trust the process you can exit from me to Westfield <laughs> I did not know that uh, but now I know there used to be these connections as well so in the past I know there was a connection to Westfield but I didn't know that H&M has maintained and the, uh, the door. Sometimes with new owners, they you know they block the opening and the, the closing. Christian Louboutin Harrods. I only found out from the crowns, you know, the crowns on Netflix, that Harrods are owned by uh, the dad of Dodi Alfaya, and they're not British. They're not British national, they don't have British citizenship. That's insane. Everything is run by migrants. That's what it is. We are all migrants. Even Harold, the most English of the brand, is ran by and owned by migrants. I don't know if they have their, their citizenship now anymore or not. I like this pretty flower. Pretty flower. Balance Yaga. There is a Burberry here. I did not know that. You know what? Because I'm Asian, people think I have money because there's a lot of Chinese tourists that just drop five grand. Like, mate, I can't even afford a grand for the past for five months. For transportation, I don't think I'm one of those tourists. 
by Chinese tourists that can afford any of this. <laughs> Imagine not being able to afford a thousand dollars over the period of five months. That's like two hundred dollars a month. I can't afford two hundred dollars a month just purely on transport fee. It's not even on Uber fee. It's like two hundred dollars a month, not a not a week, not like on Uber or something that can cost eighty dollars per ride. No, no, a month. One thing though, in two thousand and twenty-three. That was surprising for me. There was a couple of things that Celine, I love Celine. Ooh. Which one of the black pink is Celine? Is it Jenny? Jenny is Chanel. Which one is Celine? Lisa? No. Well, in 2023, one of the things that made me felt like something was changing was when I got a wart on my finger and I thought I just have to live with it but I didn't. It came off in February and for good it didn't grow back because up until then it was it kept growing back and I just gave up. I thought oh this is something I have to live in forever and it wasn't and it was the same with a few other things like my showers and my balcony kind of like I accepted the fact that oh maybe this is just life you know this is what I kind of have to accept that this is gonna this is what it is you know it's gonna last forever and I just have to put up with it and it did it uh, the showers got fixed the balcony almost done so there are that so there's like three things that I thought it was gonna be permanent forever for the rest of my life type of thing. And it got sorted that year too. David Jones. I know I need to end this rant soon because my storage is probably <laughs> running out as usual. But I don't know, I don't have anywhere to talk about this. I was going to talk about it on TikTok, but I don't think TikTok is a good place for long-form talk. So, here I am. Ooh. Fancy. Actually, I don't particularly care anymore now. I need to sit down. I'm tired. I'm going to try to find a cafe. I don't know if it's open or not. Uh, I used to work for David Jones like a long time ago, um, 2008, 2007 maybe. How old was that? Uh, how long ago was that? Uh, 15 years ago? 14, 16 years ago? Oh god, I came here when I was 14. It was like longer than when I was, when I came here. The sign says there is a cafe. Ooh. Tate Baker. What? Ninety dollars. But it's not. But this is not leather. I know, I know. Like it's bad leather. You can't just do leather. But nice. Not. Is it nice? <laughs> Look at my belly. This is extra large, by the way. I don't know, I'm not satisfied with my body. It really feels annoying. Check out the cafe. They used the cafe used to be in the corner there. So I don't know where it is now. Oh, is it here? Is it open? This mirror, so many mirrors. Makes me feel bad about myself. Oh, it's closed. Kitchen is closed. Oh. Okay then. Ooh. This used to be cashmere. I used to hunt this down in eBay. Because <laughs> it's cheaper. I know 
know, I feel like I am promoting body dysmorphia, like unhealthy body image. But I just saw a lady like in their 60s, um, like a very proper Ajuma Asian lady, and her body was so slim and like that ideal Asian lady type of body type. Oh, this is nice. This is a regular blouse, but it's nice. Is it linen? Cotton? I think it's cotton. But yeah, I feel like I'm defeated by a 60-year-old. Why do I have to be so competitive about these things? It's not good at all. But I am competitive, aren't I? CK! Witchery has stopped selling leather bags. I don't know, out of ethical reason or out of, I don't know. Which is a shame because I really like witcheries. I really like witcheries back usually. They don't have bags anymore. Country Rory has bags but no more leather. I checked. And I know all of these things are just something that you just have to put up with to some extent life. And my body is not something I want to shake too hard because I tried that and definitely did not work well and backfired instead of it going well. It usually uh, ended up me being sick for like years and years so maybe a little bit misshapen is better than being bedridden for years and years also the sewage water is still smell like sewage water right now oh, I'm gonna get out of here I guess I have internalized uh, toxic mindset when it comes to body image is like you need to be beautiful and need to be thin have flat stomach like Britney Spears that was my goal when I was 18 years old like to have flat stomach like Britney Spears um, and to you know to be loved to be revered to be respected all of those bullshit definitely not true definitely not true you can be whatever body shape you are and you are deserving of love of uh, of respect of everything that you know a uh, human being deserves it doesn't depend on your shape it doesn't depend on your aesthetic judgment of who you are what you are just the fact that you exist matters Uniqlo look at these but my belly would be showing though if I did this. I'm still insecure. It's pretty though. It's 40 bucks. Like the body image um, thing right now has changed dramatically compared to when I was growing up, which is the 2000s. Now we have a variety of body shapes, even in advertisement, in official advertisement. So I should feel more confident, but I guess. It has been internalized so much that I'm unable to do that yet. I hope it will change. I want to have a business that kind of doesn't suck out all my energy and my time and my stamina. Something that I feel excited about. Something that's profitable. Maybe not to the extent that I want it to, but you know, manageable, sustainable. Actually, give me something I'm not sure what or which is like the certification that I cancelled was about uh, entrepreneurship and also a new business but I thought about it I'm like why am I studying it like it's not a certification thing business is something that you do it's something that I mean that is not just, you know, you study in school. 
either you have a talent for it or not I guess because like school is probably just trying to give you the structure of you know invoicing like, like vocation um, school I'm not talking about university um, university did not do much for me um, but yeah anyway I don't know what to do as you can see from this vlog <laughs> I am lost in life almost 40 still got no idea what to do feeling really ugly and fat broke beyond belief sick I feel like <laughs> I don't even want to meet anyone I know because I'm embarrassed of myself I feel ashamed but at the same time I know like you shouldn't feel ashamed like you survived this long you should be proud but no this is my feelings right now I'm sure I have accomplished a lot of things but they just don't feel like accomplishments because right now I got nothing to show for I think I complained enough today Happy New Year <laughs> But that's where my mindset, my, my mind is at right now, my headspace. This is the beginning of the year, 2nd of January. And yeah, follow along to see whether this pessimism is going to keep going until the end of this year. And yeah, I felt like, I feel, really feel like I am losing hope and I'm learning helplessness. And... I just feel like there is nothing to look forward to. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.